Hello and welcome to a wet and rainy Cornwall. We're here at Mainpools Beach. following a homemade walk today. We started in Mornensmith, we're coming down to this cove at Mainpools and then following a track up towards Mewden Hotel to take us back to Mornensmith with a few stories along the way. It's March, it's our holiday, <laughs> it's our time off work and it's raining. <laughs> Hello everyone, we're in Mornensmith today. It always seems to rain when we come to Mornensmith. It's nice when we left though. So we're expecting to get quite muddy. We've got walking boots, we've got clean dogs at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> we're heading from Morning Smith down to Mainport. So we've got two or three wonderful stories on the way. One about seaweed, one about... Knickers. <laughs> Sorry, I, I going to say it. <laughs> and another where it gets slightly lost in translation is a little bit naughty. Oh, okay, we're telling that one, are we? Yeah. That's right. So it's a four-mile homemade circular walk today around Warren and Smith. Yeah, with it being homemade, we will pop all of the instructions onto, with a map and everything, onto Patreon. If you're interested, hop over to patreon.com and search Cornish Walking Trails. Join us over there and support the channel. I like Mornan Smith. It's a lovely village. It's got a good community and there's so much here. There's a shop, there's a pub, there's a little square with lots of different types of shops in, isn't it? It's a real community, isn't it? Yeah. The village shop is beautiful as well. It's always nicely laid out. You've yeah. got a pub, haven't you? And you've even got public loos. These days they're quite rare. <laughs> That's a beautiful part of Cornwall as well, isn't it? Down on the Helford. Yeah. I know it's March and the weather's not great, but it's always lovely to come down here. It's always a bit milder, isn't it? Mm. All the daffodils are out there looking beautiful. It's somewhere that if you were thinking of coming to Cornwall to retire, perfect. It would, wouldn't it? Yeah. You'd need deep pockets, so. Yeah, <laughs> it's not, not, not cheap to buy property here. Yeah, because it? it's quite close to Falmouth and you're near the water, obviously, but um, lovely village. Three quick facts about Mornan Smith. Oh, okay, well, I know it, it, it gets its name from the smithy. This is the building, the smithy, that gives the village its name. The Red Lion Pub. Yeah. Very old pub. I think it's probably 16th century. Right. Uh, it's haunted. Oh, is it? Yeah. That's and a fact. It's a fact. It's on their sign outside. <laughs> and also, Morden Smith was pivotal in the D-Day uh, landings, in oh. the preparations and also for leaving the UK in, for the D-Day landings in World War II. Which will come in at the end of this video when we get back to the village. There we go. Good job you didn't ask for four because I didn't have another one. <laughs> Favourite cottage? That's pretty, isn't it? And there's the modern day one, and it just leaves me cold. Does that mean something wrong with me? I know that's much more efficient and better to run, but that makes me smile. <laughs> We've just met somebody coming the other way. He told us this path's very muddy. We we're kind of expecting that. We've had lots of rain recently, so it is what it is, isn't it? As long as it's passable, then we're okay. Do you remember a few years ago we used to use a mudometer? We did. Yeah, that is quite muddy. Am I doing the mud water on? <laughs> you are doing a good job. like a petticoat now. <laughs> I'm sure it's too late but... <laughs> it's probably why they wore petticoats. So it didn't go muddy. Mudometer? 10 out of 10. Well, we got through though. Surely a 10 out of 10 is where you fail to get through. It's because it's so muddy. 9.5 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Where's the 
this our puppy? <laughs> Wee! He's off. It's <laughs> a good idea. It's going to get him nice and clean, isn't it? Yeah, but we clean it over there. Oh, we'll just leave him here. <laughs> I know you shouldn't ask a lady, but what colour knickers are you wearing? <gasps> I know why you're asking. It's to do with a fantastic story we found in our uh, copy of the Cornwall Village book. This was put together, it's a collection of stories put together by the WI for each village. And then under Morn and Smith there is a lovely, fantastic story specifically about this lane. <laughs> the local legend has it that this is Fine and Brave Lane. The story goes that during the French Wars, the women of the village hurried down this narrow lane, pitchforks in hand, to repel an invasion from the French ship nearing Mainport. Fortunately, glimpses of their red petticoats persuaded the French that a company of redcoats was approaching and they sailed away. The men of Mornan, proud of their women's initiative, declared it's a fine and brave thing to do. And it's said that since then, the lane has been known as fine and brave. However, a more prosaic explanation is that the name may be a corruption of the Cornish Finn and Bray, the boundary of a hill. For the lane lies below an impressive Iron Age earthwork known locally as Round Field. Being a romantic, I like the idea of the ladies rushing down, pitchforks in hand, showing their red petticoats to defend the village. I do too. Brilliant. <laughs> so I had that wrong in it, wasn't it? Because it was petticoats. You shouldn't speak with your mouth full. <laughs> Silenced you. Can't believe it. I'm empty now. So it's petticoats? Yeah. Not knickers? No. Do you want me to stop saying knickers? Yeah. I'll stop saying knickers. Enough already. It's petticoats. What colour is your petticoat? <laughs> so, you were saying? <laughs> I think we've taken the wrong lane. Okay. So we're on a footpath. Yeah. We're almost at Mainporth. Yeah. If that story was true, we haven't seen the sea yet. Okay. So if that story was correct, there's no way anybody on a ship at sea could see what was going on in there. Oh, well, I'm really confused now. Because I think if you didn't have any trees here, you could see the sea. Can I just retract everything I've just said? <laughs> oh, I don't know. <laughs> Find out when we're at the end. It's raining. I just want to get to Mainport and have a pretty view. <laughs> <laughs> I just want an ice cream. Oh, yeah. Good luck with that one. <laughs> it's winter. <laughs> That won't stop me. Cafe I'm shut. I'm having ice cream rope and I'm having one. Okay, I'm having a coffee. It wasn't so misty today. Yeah. You can actually see the sea. It's, it's at the end of this uh, pathway, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, the other side of that false built up bank. So are we saying that this is the right lane then? Oh, I'm imagining it is. The romantic side of me says this is it and they would have run down here, pitchfork, petticoat flowing. <laughs> Out of control, dog. Oh, yeah. That would have scared them off. <laughs> there it is. The sea. I just saw that. Yeah, That's on. where I met him. Yeah. There's, there's no ice cream. I've got hot chocolate, rocky road, 
What you got? A wobbly table. <laughs> Oh, it looks nice. Perfect. You let this rain pass over. Nice. And a nice view. Oh, you found some. The beach is brilliant to see here. Yeah. We've got a good story about seaweed. Let's dig out the book. This book is an absolute gem. So it's focused specifically on the activities in and around the Helford during the Second World War. And one of the unusual things we found, it says here one very special commodity was collected on the rocks at Mainport Beach in September 1943, when the tides were exceptionally low. This was the seaweed and it gives the name, and I'll try and pronounce it, it says gonotheria, I don't know which form that is, from which the extract agar agar is obtained, used in the culture of penicillin and originally imported from Japan. Bagfuls of it were collected for drying, and no doubt many wounded people benefited from this antibiotic, which has only just been discovered. You're taking away the seriousness of this. About 15 years earlier by Alexander Fleming. So here's a photograph of two people collecting seaweed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we are trying to make quite a serious point that this beach played an important part in the Second World War to help men heal after wounded, being wounded in battle. I, I think that's amazing. Yeah, I do too. And I suppose there would have been a shortage of... Well, m most Japan. things well, that Japan was on the other side. Wasn't oh, I, oh, so it was Japan. Yeah. Oh, I see. Yeah. So they had to um, find, find a an way, alternative. an alternative. Gosh, that's really good, isn't it? Necessity is the mother of invention. Yeah. Out there somewhere. <laughs> Look what you've done. <laughs> Chaos. Ironically, Sarah. Yeah. Have you seen what the chapter's called? Dig for victory. <laughs> Perhaps that's what he's telling us. Come here, darling. <laughs> Come on, you need to go on the leaves now. <laughs> Must just say hello to Ian and Esther. Does this remind you of anything? <laughs> Another great day of weather here in Mainport. I hope you're keeping well. I am. Ha! That's a good life hack. Step in your footsteps, they're not full of water. <laughs> Our destination, Andrew. Ah, oh, beautiful. We're now heading to Breen Cove. It's at the bottom of Muden Hotel's grounds and it's actually a private beach but they don't mind you wandering on there and that's where we're going to go now. Just get some mud off these guys and, and also from us.
<laughs> Are you finding treasure? I am. How much have we got? Oh, that's loads, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. It's quite rounded as well, isn't it? Mm. It's quite nice on this beach, isn't it? Yeah. It's on every beach in Cornwall. What are you going to do with that then? Oh, I don't know. If I do do something, I'll put it at the end of the video. <laughs> okay. <laughs> done it. <laughs> well done. This is a nice book, Sarah. It's called Operation Cornwall from 1940 to 1944, and it tells the story of Cornwall in wartime in the Second World War. And it starts off, it talks about the threat of invasion. Can I just read this piece to you? Mm. So it starts off, it says, Falmouth Bay was filled with boats, large and small. To Letitia Allen and her mother, looking out of the window of their home in Bayview Crescent, it seemed as if so many were crammed into the wide bay, that it would be possible to walk from one boat to another from the horizon to the shore. These were the menacing days of June 1940, when the phony war had suddenly ended and Western Europe was falling before the might of the German army. Invasion loomed dark on the horizon. Four years later, Falmouth Bay was once more to witness the massing of boats on its waters. This time, it was for the Allied invasion of the German-held Normandy beaches on the 6th of June, 1944, D-Day. And Morn Smith, like most of the villages here around the Helford, I mean, this whole area was full of mainly American GIs. They were, you know, getting ready to go across um, for D-Day. Yeah, yeah, embark on these boats, yeah. weren't they? And yeah. um, the whole area kind of got sealed off. It got taken over by the American troops. And we've got some lovely, some lovely, lovely photos in here. And as we go back through Morn and Smith, we'll try and have a look at a few of these. Yeah, okay. Yeah. How brown are you? You're as brown as that one. Hmm. Cheers. So with so many Americans being here around the Helford area, a lot of the locals were struggling to sometimes understand what they were talking about. So one of the local newspapers helpfully gave a little guide. So the West Britain, which is the local newspaper for this area, they printed an article and it was entitled What the Yanks Say and What We Say. So just to give an example, it says, for example, if the Yanks say raincoat, we say Macintosh. <laughs> if the Yanks say elevator, we say lift. If the Yanks say automobile, we say car, that type of thing. So it leads on to say that the language difference could cause unexpected embarrassment, such as a time when the landlady of a popular hostelry in Truro fell down rather heavily on her bottom one evening. The following day, a concerned American officer called out in a rather loud voice, Hey, Mrs. Jones, how's your fanny today? There was a stunned hush while the lady <laughs> tried to hide her Aaron. confusion. <laughs> I, w I would like to point out it wasn't me, that was from a book. So, uh, <laughs> any complaints really to, to the author of this book? So, to any confused Americans that are sitting on their seat, I'll run along the bottom of the screen what that means to us in England. Really? <laughs> we'll get us banned. <laughs> um, sorry if we caused any offence. We just thought it was rather amusing. <laughs> So the final thing we're going to do, my battery is about to run out yeah, and I haven't got a spare dark. one. What I'd like to do, this book, as we yes. said, Operation Cornwall, 1940 to 44. This photo here, so I'm going to try and line this up. This was taken yes. as a reference. You can see the red line in the background. The title oh. at the bottom, it says Operation Duck, troops passing the red line at Morn and Smith. And they're on this vehicle here, yeah. aren't they? Now, I think that was taken 
corner of this junction here. Good luck with that. Yeah, so I'm going to go and see if I can line that shot up. There's the pub. Let's see what we can do. hope you've enjoyed our homemade walk starting from Morning Smith all the way to Mainporth and Bream Cove an absolute joy for more details join us on Patreon yeah thanks for joining us today middle of March a lovely stroll along the beach it's a really nice part of Cornwall to visit this time of year isn't it got incredibly muddy <laughs> I'm clean now I'm fine I cleaned mine off yeah you haven't seen the backs of your legs oh, okay. <laughs> look at that <laughs> So we'll see you next time. For now, we'll sign off and say bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye.